Earlier this month, Trump claimed he just needed one more indictment, this indictment, to win the 2024 election. And tonight, The Guardian is reporting that Trump had his lawyers negotiate his booking at the Fulton County Jail to take place during primetime cable news hours, which would maximize the ratings for his arrest. So, yes, Trump seems to be weirdly enjoying all of this. But he is not the only, co -defend the only defendant here. He has 18 co-defendants in this case, and so far, they do not seem to be enjoying this. In fact, it looks like they are trying to resist every bit of it. Just today, former Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows asked a federal judge to either immediately grant his request to move the Georgia election case to federal court so he could avoid being arrested this week, or to require Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis to extend his deadline to surrender, sort of an extension, like a term paper. Now, D.A. Willis has until tomorrow afternoon to reply to Mr. Meadows' request in a formal court filing, but she already told Meadows' legal team exactly how she felt this morning in an email. Quote, I am not granting any extensions. Your client is no different than any other criminal defendant in this jurisdiction. At 12.30 p.m. on Friday, I shall file warrants in the system. D.A. Willis means a warrant for Mark Meadows' arrest, if that was not clear. Now, Mark Meadows is not the only one trying to get out of all of this. Both David Schaefer, one of the Georgia fake electors, and Jeffrey Clark, Trump's former DOJ lawyer, both of them are also trying to get this case moved to federal court. Part of Clark's reasoning for moving his case to federal court and avoiding arrest in Atlanta was that Clark should not be required to book a flight to Georgia under such extreme time pressure. Now, it took us about 15 seconds to find a flight from D.C., which is where, where, near, where Jeffrey Clark lives, to the city of Atlanta. He could fly American Airlines tomorrow for $265. For Jeffrey Clark, a former partner at a major law firm, that does not seem like a great excuse to skirt arrest. But these days, who knows what Mr. Clark's finances are like? Mr. Meadows' lawyers put it a little bit more bluntly further down in his filing today, writing, prompt action is needed to spare Mr. Meadows the burden and cost of defending himself in state court. What is becoming increasingly clear here is that the legal bills in this case could be staggering, and it is unclear for whom Mr. Trump is willing to open up his piggy bank. Today, we saw the first of Trump's 18 co-defendants in this case turn themselves in for booking at the Fulton County Jail. Now, one of them was former Trump attorney John Eastman. NBC's Ali Vitale was on the scene and nailed down the question I would like to have answered by every Trump co-defendant. Who's paying your legal fees? I am. You are. Uh, Just you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, legal fees, right? It's not the former president. That's correct. It is clear that Trump and his co-defendants are all in need of a lot of cash at this precise moment. Even if you just look at the bail amounts that we have so far for Trump and his co-defendants, that is a lot of money before the case even really gets started. Those dollar amounts and whether Trump starts footing the bills could matter a lot. Take, for instance, former Trump lawyer Jenna Ellis, who is on the hook for $100,000 in bail alone. Last week, Ellis started a crowdfunding campaign on a Christian website seeking small dollar donors to cover her defense bills. So far, she has barely passed the amount needed for just the bail. And today, CNN reports that Jenna Ellis's lawyers met at Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis's office. Now, Jenna Ellis has not surrendered for booking yet, but she is having her lawyers meet with the DA's team. So my questions are, is Jenna Ellis flipping? And if so, given the financial pressure on her other 17 co-defendants, or 16, how long until we see others make a similar choice? I am joined once again by Andrew Weissman. Andrew, um, are we overthinking this one yet? Jenna Ellis in financial straits meeting with the DA before she surrenders. Um, I think we may be a little bit like over our skis. Yeah. I mean, that it's definitely a possibility uh, the, the biggest issue of like if I were counseling one of these people as independent counsel, not being paid by a Trump PAC, is that the window for cooperating is really now. Um, this, there is sort of a race to, to come in. And if you want to um, sort of be able to tell a judge at sentencing, 
you know, I accepted responsibility and this is how I helped. It helps to be the first in, not the 17th in. Um, Cause you really wanna say, you know, I broke the log jam, I did this, I was the one who, and yes, I did these wrong things, but here's what I did right to make it right. Um, and putting that off is, I mean, there are all sorts of things that could happen down the road that, for instance, if you wanna give information about Donald Trump, well, what if he, um, wins the presidency, you know, he's going to be out of the Georgia case, well, yeah. but you know what? You're not going to be out of the Georgia case because yeah. that case stays regardless of whether he or an ally becomes president. So if you're thinking about your window of sort of when you are most valuable to the government, it could be now. The time is nigh. Right.